I am horrified by what's happening to our first responders. Remember the first responders? We used to like our first responders, right? After 9-11 and so forth, the police and the firefighters and the emergency personnel, they're under attack. They're under attack. The thin blue line is thin, as you can see. I want to tell you about a little list of so far as I do this program, and it'll grow, of what's taking place to and with law enforcement out there. Retired police captain, St. Louis police, David Dorn, shot and killed by looters for no reason whatsoever. He was watching, assisting his friend who owned, who owned a pawn shop, as I said, and it was filmed as he was dying on Facebook. Imagine being his wife. Imagine being his children. Imagine being his grandchildren. I have not seen his story, at least when I looked. Maybe he's added it on LeBron James's Twitter site. Now, why do I keep bringing up LeBron James? Because Le LeBron James is out there talking about all this. But it's not just him. It's Steve Curry. It's virtually every major athlete or coach or Hollywood star and so forth. They don't know who David Dorn is, and they don't even want to know who David Dorn is because there's a narrative out there. A narrative. It's a black man whose life, whose life doesn't matter, apparently. A Las Vegas Metropolitan Police officer was shot in the back of the head, and as I speak to you, he's on life support. Four St. Louis police officers were injured in a showdown with a shooter. A New York police officer was struck by a vehicle. And by the way, there's a lot more of that going on, the assault of New York police officers. One police officer had all his front teeth knocked out. He was punched in the face by a hoodlum who had brass knuckles. Three Buffalo law enforcement officers were struck by a vehicle in front of the police station. These are our first responders. Three Davenport law enforcement officers were ambushed. One was shot. As of now, it'll grow. 132 officers were injured in Chicago during a riot. Nine Pittsburgh officers were injured by objects during a riot. Several officers in Rhode Island were injured during riots. An active shooter opened fire at the Oakland Police Department. Two officers were struck in the head with projectiles in Santa Ana. Two Richmond officers were shot in Virginia. One officer was struck in the head by a brick in Albany. And by the way, this is a partial list. Four Prince William County, Virginia, police officers sustained head injuries from projectiles. Seven officers were injured in Sacramento. Several officers were shot at and injured in Lynchburg, Virginia. Several Champaign police officers were injured in Illinois. Three Oak Lawn police officers were injured. 21 officers were injured in Salt Lake City. At least 50 Secret Service agents were in injured by all kinds of projectiles and Molotov cocktails in Washington, D.C. Three Denver police officers were run over by a vehicle. 33 New York police officers were injured during the riots. That number is skyrocketed. Two Capitol police officers in Pennsylvania were injured during a riot in Harrisburg. Twelve Las Vegas Metropolitan Police officers were injured during riots. And I mentioned one Federal Protective Services officer was shot and killed, Mr. Underwood. And that would be in Oakland, California. Now, I want to again talk about retired police captain David Dorn, who was shot by a looter outside a North St. Louis pawn shop. Local news is actually doing a very good job. National news is a disgrace, as always. Anyway, let's take a look. Go. Just an absolutely tragic development to learn and confirm that David Dorn is, in fact, a retired St. Louis City police officer. And police say he was killed by looters last night outside of Lee's Pawn and Jewelry, where I'm standing. So right now, there is a homicide investigation underway in Lee's Pawn and Jewelry. Despite the fact that there are construction workers outside, I have seen police officers going in and out of the building. Now, a video from Facebook Live that appears to show the aftermath of his death has also been circulating, leaving many traumatized. As you can imagine, several other businesses here on Martin Luther King Drive were also looted overnight. It makes me really feel bad because it could have been me. 
the same thing could have happened to me. Peter Johnson is the owner of Prime Designs Hair Salon. It's next door to Lee's Pawn and Jewelry. It's ridiculous, you know, it don't make any sense. You know, I don't know what's going on, you know, and we as people need to come together. Her business was also looted last night. Thieves trashed the hair salon, took TVs off the walls, and even smashed the vending machine. Next door at Lee's Pawn, the windows were busted out. There's broken glass and blood on the ground outside. It's terrible. You know, it's distracting to everybody. Vita didn't know David Dorn personally, but says so many innocent people are being targeted for things they're not involved in. They're messing with small business owners, you know, and all we're doing is trying to make a living every day. Vita says she plans to push forward. I'm not going to close up. I'm not going to board up. Unfortunately, David Dorn won't have that opportunity. This is going on, the destruction of these small businesses in minority communities mostly, all over the country. So when they sit back at CNN and MSNBC and they write their pithy pieces in the New York Times and the Washington Post and they talk about police brutality and systemic racism and they are upset with the President of the United States for walking through Lafayette Park and holding his mother's Bible in front of St. John's Church, which had also been torched. And they want to know if the protesters, if their First Amendment rights are being protected, because as we all know, the vast majority of the protesters are peaceful. They're peaceful. You know, like the salon and gym and restaurant protesters two, three weeks ago, who were said to be endangering their communities, whose civil liberties were under attack by the governors and the press. No, no, these protesters, these are peaceful protesters. These are people going into these communities, ruining them, many of them, and then leaving them.